I remember now, it's all coming back to me, seeing okay. Jakey Locke and Atesca. This was the team that got top eight with boots in doubles and made me go, okay, there's actually some potential here for boots. And so it's all just flooding back. And now I feel bad for talking about boots in the way that we did. In yeah, you were such a hater for yeah, boots. Yeah. Um, all right, here we go. Game number one, Fortress of Lions. This is uh, an interesting, like, it's starting to feel like EU's really just leaning into Olgrim plus friend as as far as team leaning go. Leaning into? <laughs> That's been the region for five years. Yeah, but now, now it's back. With, Although I guess it was more like, was available. It was more like Axe plus friend. Yeah. Axe plus friend. Ooh, and now it's, yeah. uh, now it is just Olgrim plus friend. Which is cool because uh, I thought that it would fall off a little bit more with how, like, Lance Sayer you actually have to hit now for it to be uh, good, but... They're just old remains through and through. Uh, first stock goes over to the blue team. She can go down pretty early. Let's see what Blitz is able to do. Munir on the uh, Devil Jin. Epic crossover for Zario. Doing pretty well so far. Okay. Big Sayer catches everybody coming out from Coco. Oh, man. Jakey and Blitz, though. They're, they're starting to, uh, to struggle as Jakey's down to his final stock. Finally, they'll take a stock off this blue team. Munir going to fall on the right side. Yeah, Coco and Munir doing pretty darn good. I can't even really be a Boots hater right now, right? Well, you absolutely can. He's he's on one stock. He's this is the best he's, time he's, to be a hater. He's been on Gauntlet. This could be a fair weather hater. It's tough because I think Coco and Munir might actually just be that team. <laughs> they are, okay, Coco finally goes down combo? one stock, and they get the team combo to Munir, and just like that, it's even up three to three. Ah, we're back. I'm jinxing it. <laughs> yes. There we Intentionally? go. Intentionally? No. No. But it's just this, like, it feels better than to see what was happening there, which yeah. was like a really dominant game one. I mean, Coco, Coco Munir definitely started off very dominant. And there's still a healthy lead right now. Downsig, Blitz able to punish, but Munir's keeping Blitz on this uh, wall. Oh, side sig hits, and that spike angle is so huge. Coco, does he have to go for the edge guard there? Blitz goes down, shut down, and Coco. Working with Munir to get this edge guard here, and Jakey actually winning. Gets hit by that Darren to recovery. That's a lot of damage coming through there, and now it's a race between who's going to go down first. It's going to be Munir or Jakey. Yo, yeah, the setup blitz. for Munir's GC sidelight there. Yeah, that was really incredible. Oh, it's a friendly fire coming through. Downlight ends up sending Jakey's gauntlets out of his arms. Little Sig, that's a whiff. Nice, Jakey coming in with the interrupt, but the side air Ouch. puts Jakey out of there. Uh, but Munir does go down, and it is now a 1v1. A very lopsided 1v1, mind you, but a 1v1 nonetheless. Let's see what Blitz can do. I mean, keep on arm recovering. Go for a third. Oh, Why not? Oh, side air, mix it up. <laughs> Same fist, different angle. Same, yeah, yeah. Oh, slightly less knockback. And then Coco says, get out of here. Batter up, hits the same ball twice. It's like when is you there hit, a like, rule about that? I, like, I don't imagine. Know. Imagine I, you, you, like, you bunt it up, and then you Are hit you saying, it? like, it's like a foul? Like a foul ball, but it goes straight up, and then because it goes straight up, you just hit it again. Yeah. I don't actually know. I don't so think anybody's ever attempted any it. <laughs> no one's ever attempted it in the world of baseball. Uh, they, they, just, they throw a fastball, and you take your bat, and you just, like, swing, like, up. <laughs> <You're> just <laughs> That would be the worst, because the catcher just... I think once you hit the ball, you're not allowed to hit it again, because you have to, like, give people a chance to, like, catch it, right? I don't know. That would be... I have no idea. I don't know the rules. We watch esports. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Game two. Give me, give me a up. base brawl, and then maybe we'll talk. Eh? <laughs> but we're getting into the next one. Blitz gonna make a swamp off of the old Grim over to the Finn again. It seems okay. like we're getting a little bit more Jala love today. Yeah, as well. Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been happening Three, more frequently, two, and there's been a lot of conversation one. about it. Um, I think even over in South America, right, uh, it has been a conversation where you just like believing in, in the Jala 2 in singles and twos places, where I just think that all the stars kind of align, uh, where if Axe is really good right now, but people want to take advantage of all these stats and these signatures, and they want to get away from the defense heavy or Lance heavy style that is playing Ultimate all the time, I think Jala comes in quite nicely. Uh, I, just about anybody who's competed in Brawlhalla has a pocket sword. Yeah. Right? Um, but here we go into game number two. Yeah, Munir and Coco uh, quite dominant in that game one. And it's looking like it's going to be the same here in game two at this rate. That down sig just narrowly avoids spiking glitz. The I side sig narrowly, gets, uh, narrowly avoids as well, but the interrupts are only working out for so long. Down air comes through. Can Jakey make it back? Nah. Saved? 
Was that save worth it? Let's find out. Blitz took a ton of damage. Yeah. <laughs> recovery near, recovery near coming up from Moonir there. And that's another thing. Moonir on, on unarmed is a lot like watching Java play unarmed. Um, where it's just like, it's a third weapon that has over 100 damage every game. Okay. I like that decision there from Coco. Catches both people, but obviously with the lead they have, getting extra damage on the red team is just good. Ooh, weapon throw. We're seeing Jakey try to get some signatures off of the Akuma. Um, six stocks to four. Oh, it could be six stocks to three. Moodier is still surviving. Coco trying to land with uh, the Lance Sider there and Blitz. Is that friendly fire? I, didn't see it. I think it was. I think it was a sword sail that ended up launching when you're there. Okay. Neutral, neutral light will light. finally do it, and that will knock out Coco off the top of the stage as well. Still a pretty bad position for the red team here so far. Neutral light. Blitz comes in, interrupts. Down light, Munir with the delay on that recovery, so Blitz can get away from that one. Ooh. Down sick whiffs. Munir lands with down air. Down light comes through in the recovery. We'll take Blitz off the top of the stage. Team combo comes in. Coco perfect off the gauntlet neutral light. And that was so strong of the knockback that I wasn't even sure if the end sick would hit, but he absolutely aware of that positioning. And then Munir just starts juggling Blitz on this last stop. Right, Jake tries to get some damage in, but immediately Coco with the coverage. Blitz, nice neutral light onto Munir. Finding damage where they can, but man, this red team is still getting hurt. Oh, Ooh, Blitz goes off the side of the stage with Saren. Recovery hits. Not going to quite land. They both go for the same sword and light, and Coco takes a ton of damage. Oh, Duke. I think we got to start talking about what Blitz and Jake are going to have to do to be able to even take a game. This is this is brutal. I mean, Moonier and Coco are just that good. Yeah, Moonier and Coco looking solid. Jake just oh. trying to find some ground right now. He's been sweat beating for a minute, and he will not it's, stop. It's impossible. They're just... I. 266 damage from Jakey, 380 from Blitz. I mean, at, at this point, I guess you just gotta try to do what you what you do best, the, the best that you can. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> it's so weird where it's like it's been a bit since the winners' quarters where I feel like I've watched a two's team get to be this bad. <laughs> Man, you are. Uh... I'm a big Coco and Spyro. <laughs> you, <can tell. laughs> you can tell, right? Yeah, the, the, no bias on that one. Oh. But J, Jakey and Blitz, uh, definitely on the back foot. They got to take um, a moment here and think about the team comp. The How double sword wasn't the answer. It's crazy because Taros wasn't even played. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> That is crazy. Bro played all group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taros is just there. It's the Acno Taros from last game. You're like, I'm still here. Oh, man. Can't that's avoid funny. him. <laughs> that bull is everywhere. So, what What are they locking in here for game three? Um, I think oh, that's all Grim's head. Do you have any ideas, Duke? Well, I don't think the double sword worked. I think the first comp that they okay. did was slightly better. Maybe just like lean into more like. Ogrim and friend, but it's a friend that he's had for a long time, like Brynn or Terrace, yeah, yeah, right? Just, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? just any axe character that you can lock in. It's been a while since we've seen Thor. Uh, no, Jakey's just back on the Tesca. I do think it's what Jakey plays the best with in yeah. twos, and I think he just... It, it was possible that after game one, he was kind of like, oh, wow, this went really poorly. Maybe I should try my old... Oh, no, nope, nope. let's go back. Nope. There's, <laughs> it just happens that Coco and Boonier are really, really, really good. All right, it's game three. Let's see if they can get a uh, a point on the board because other otherwise we're, we've got four three O's in a row today. It's been it's been pretty brutal. Yeah, it'll be a very short day at the rate that this is going. But Jakey gonna try to make this day a little longer as he's again back onto that Tezka, getting some solid plays. That's, I mean, it's, that's the sole motivation. <laughs> he's just kind of like the broadcast must go on. I need my channel points. <laughs> Like, all right, we went down to O2, back onto the Tesco. Oh, oh, that neutral that looks like it hurt so bad, like the side stick just stopping. Yeah. <laughs> just all that hit stun, no oh. force. Okay, oh, yeah. red team though, they've got the lead. Coco definitely healthy here, but Moonier with that side stick gonna send Blitz flying and the weapon toss That's interrupts it. the recovery. Yeah, yeah he is done. moonier has been getting these Zariel side sigs right at the point where the spike will go over the yeah, edge of the over wall the without the bounce. And that's like really hard to do and he's been perfect at it. Um, 
Because it's like the, the spacing has to be right, but you also have to hit the move. It's just, it's been crazy. Lots of damage coming in on Jakey there. Saves Coco, actually, from the midst of a boot string oh, from Jakey. Here. And Coco is still holding on. And now Munir, after going down so early, has actually managed to stay relatively undamaged. Yeah, I mean, Munir at this point is uh, healthier than both of the red team members. Jakey will find that downlight recovery, taking down Coco. Not going to press advantage onto Munir on that outside. He knows Gauntlet Nair can be a uh, troublesome thing to turn around. Oh, falls in the Nair. Munir trying to get the team combo there with the N-Sig. Gravity catches oh. the sidelight. Oh, oh Coco Munir. does manage to get back down. Munir was there to help him. Uh, but that sider from Blitz means they can focus over on a Coco, possibly. No, Blitz is... Okay, no, Blitz was fainting going for the edge guard there and then went back up that end light. That was nicely done. And now it's a really close game three. Yo, but Munir will take down Blitz. Jakey on the outside will be able to come back up. Neutral save, save from Coco! Coco. That's huge. Catches the landing to stop the explosion from happening. Yeah, as much as that looks like a spike from Tesca, the strong hit is absolutely when it hits the ground. Uh, so that was huge to be able to stop that from the impact. Um, save Munir from what would have been certain doom, and they got some extra damage off for it, too. Munir does get shut down, however, and that team combo comes through completely even game three. Blitz was ready for that. He was setting up, threw away the lance, and got that GC down like ground pound. Everybody on final stocks, Jakey and Blitz, they need to win this if they want to take this to game number four. Munir oh. from below. Oh, yeah, that recovery. Trying to chase dodge after Blitz, after that came through. Uh, Blitz holds on. Jakey goes in. Oh, the Boots recovery came there. The, the, the powerful aspect of Boots recovery is the distance that you travel with it, not necessarily the knockback at the end of it. Um, on the gravity cancel, Neutral from Blitz will tack on some damage. All right, it's got, that's Blitz going down, and now Jakey in this 1v2 oh. has to take that Munir. That could be the stock. Not enough. Neutral light, and that'll do it. Munir with the recovery. Coco and Munir with the 3 0. Oh, you're getting what you want, Taza. Coco Munir yes. versus Spyrox, Spyrox Herbidor. Herbidor versus Coco Munir is now a reality, and one of those teams has to lose. They, what, they just have to. Well, everybody can win. And I don't, I actually can't say. After after watching those two sets, who's the favor? If I was going to look at that, right? I mean, like Coco Munir's victory there was way more dominant.